So as a next step in our little application, which is slowly taking shape here, let's work on the places. We are able to view our users. And when we click a user, I want to view all the places that belong to that user. And right now that is just not happening. I can click the user and I in the end just reload this page over and over again. The reason for that simply is that we haven't set up any route here in app.js that would handle the case that we wanna view the places of a user. Now for that, we first of all should create a new page, a places page, which is responsible for showing all the places of a user. So in the pages folder, in the places folder, I'll add a user places JS file. And in there, I want to have a component which, well, fetches and renders all the places that belong to a user. Now, the fetching part will only happen later once we also have a backend to connect the app to. But for now here, we'll also work with some dummy data. So let's import React from React here and create our user places component as we did multiple times before in this course. And of course, export this component here like that. And now I want to return my list of places. Now that list of places will actually be outsourced in a separate component. You don't have to do that, but again, I wanna keep my page component lean. I wanna keep every component lean and therefore split my app into smaller pieces. For that, we can add a place list JS file in the components folder in the places folder, for example, and add a place list CSS file there so that some styling can also be added. And also maybe add a place item JS and a place item CSS file so that we can split this up even more. And just as we did it with the user, manage list and item separated from each other. So in place list JS, there I wanna import React from React again and create my place list component where we will receive some props to configure what we output. And in the end, of course, I export place list. And we can also add the CSS import to dot slash place list CSS. We can copy all that content into place item because in the end, this file here will look very similar just that we're talking about the place item component and hence we should adjust the CSS import and also the names down there. Now back to place list. In there, the idea is, surprisingly, to output a list of places. Well, at least if we have places. So similar to what we did in our users list component, and therefore we might be able to merge some logic, but I'm not sure, I will leave it separated here, also to make it clearer and easier to follow. So similar to that other component though, I will first of all check if my items prop, which I expect to get, which should be an array of places, if the length of that is equal to zero, which means I have no places. In that case, I wanna return uh, a card in the end where I say no places found. So I'll return a div here, first of all, with a class name of place-list and then center as an extra class. So two classes added to that div. And then I wanna add my card. So I'll import the card component from the shared folder components UI elements card. And then in that div, render that card like that. And in there add a h2 tag where I say no places found maybe create one and then also below that uh, a button which says uh, share place or actually that should be a link later which leads to the new place page. So I could import the link here from React Router DOM but actually we'll soon create a custom button which can be either a button or a link and therefore for now I'll just leave that button placeholder which for the moment won't do anything. So that's our fallback if we have no places. Then we return this content. Now, of course, hopefully we do have some places. So let's also handle that scenario. In that scenario, I wanna render an unordered list with a class of place list added to it. And in there, similar to what we had in the users list, I wanna loop or I wanna go through all my items and map this array of vanilla JavaScript objects, which we'll have there, to an array of JSX elements. So we can output something dynamic here with curly braces and then props items map is the way to go. This allows us to go through every place we have and then render a place 
item for every place. Now for that, let's import the place item component, import place item from the sibling place item file, which is in the same folder. And now we can pass data to place item. For one, we need to set that special key property React requires. It always requires that when you're rendering sibling items that have the same type. So put in other words, if you're outputting a list of JSX elements. Then here, I wanna have a key of place ID and also an ID, which I wanna forward. Also place ID. Then I wanna forward an image because every place should have an image. So I will forward place dot, let's say image URL. Of course, it's up to you which data you expect here. You just have to make sure that when you later create and fetch the data, it has the structure you are expecting here. So I'm expecting that a place has an image URL property and an ID. I also want to have a title on my place. So I will forward place.title. I also want to have a short description. So I will forward place.description and also an address, a human readable address, which should be place.address. In addition, a place is created by a user and that user has an ID. So I will forward place.creator to the creator ID prop. And the coordinates are also required. We have the address to show the human readable address, but I also need the coordinates to show this on a map because we're going to render a map as well. And there I wanna have place.location as a property on the place that holds these coordinates. Coordinates will be an object with a let for latitude and a LNG for longitude property, but you'll see this in action later. With that, we added a bunch of data we feed into place item. For now, I think that does the trick. Now let's work on place item and let's make sure we do something with all the data there. Now, place item will become a bit more complex in the future, but for the moment, it can be very straightforward. I wanna return a list item here. A list item that also gets a class, place item, and that now somehow needs to output all the information we get. For example, here, I want to output an image. For that, I'll add a div, and that div will also receive a class name of place-item underscore underscore image and in there we can add an image element and set the source to props.image because we will pass this image prop to place items so we can reference it there. Alt can be set to props.title. Now below that div I'll add another div with a class name of place-item underscore underscore info and here I wanna have a h2 tag where I output the title and a h3 tag where I output the address and then let's say a paragraph where I output the description. Now, by the way, I will of course again provide some styling to you. So make sure you got all the class names and so on right and you got the same HTML structure so that the styles work for you. Of course you can deviate from my structure and setup but then you'll have to adjust the styles on your own. Now, last but not least, I'll add one last div here to every list item, and that is a div that receives a CSS class as well, the place-item underscore underscore actions class. And in here, I wanna have buttons that allow the user to interact with that place. The interactions here should be that you can view the place on a map, so that should open up an overlay, which shows the place on a map. And we will of course add that functionality throughout this module. I wanna have another button, which allows us to edit this place. Later, we will make sure that we only see this button if we are the creator of the place. For now, it will always be shown. And the same for a delete button. Later, it will only be shown if you did create the place. For the moment, it's always shown. So we got these three buttons there. Now I wanna wrap my, my place here in the end with the card component. So we'll import that card component, which we import earlier from shared components, UI elements, card. And then inside of the list item, add the card surrounding all the divs and to the card itself, I'll all set a class place-item underscore underscore content. 
with that, we are we have some code that should output places. Now it's time for some CSS. And therefore, as before, attached you find a place item CSS file, which holds all the CSS code you should put into the place item CSS file in your project. And you find a place list CSS file, which holds CSS code you should add to your place list CSS file. And with that, we hopefully have a setup here that works. Now back in user places, of course, we have to use our place list. So there I will import place list from going up one level, components, place list. And then here, return the place list component as a self-closing component. But of course here we have to pass in items on that items prop. And that should be an array of the places we want to display. For that I will create a dummy array here, actually outside of this function which I'll name dummy places to make it really clear that this is only a temporary uh, placeholder. And in there we can now add some places. Each place needs an ID, let's say P1, a title, let's say Empire State Building, a description, one of the most famous skyscrapers in the world, an image and there we have to be careful in place list I extract image URL so a place should have a property named image URL so let's name it image URL here where I will just pick an image from the web that shows the Empire State Building here we go then the human readable address which I will simply fetch on Google Maps there I searched for the Empire State Building and this is then the the address I want to use and for the coordinates which I also need coordinates I am extracting location actually should be the name I'm extracting location here so let's name this location and that should be a nested object with a let and a LNG key and both should be numbers latitude and longitude which is the default measurement system for coordinates you get that from Google Maps as well the thing here after the at symbol that's the latitude before the comma, so let's add it here. And then after this comma here, in my case the minus 73 and so on, that is the longitude and the minus is part of the longitude. So let's add that here. And with that I, I have my dummy place here. Now I will actually just duplicate it, the exact same place but with a different ID. And uh, I also forgot that we need a creator field because we are also extracting the creator ID which should be stored in a creator field. And there I will use U1 here and for the other place I will use U2. And these will be the IDs of the users who created the places. For now, as all the other things on this front end here, of course that's just dummy data. So we have all of that added. Now we can feed our dummy places into the place list here. So let's do that just like this and save it. And now to see whether that works we need a way of reaching user places. And to reach it we need to adjust our routes of course because that is ultimately where we control which pages are loaded for which URL. So here in app.js I will import the user places component from dot slash places, pages, user places, and now add a new route. Add a new route where the path we're looking for actually has a dynamic segment. You signal that to the React router by adding a colon and then any identifier of your choice, UID or user ID, whatever you want, you will later be able to extract the actual value entered in the URL for this segment in the component which is loaded. This simply means you don't know the exact value yet, it is dynamic. Here it will be the user ID and of course we will have many users, so this could be U1, U2, U3. Well, we just want to handle any user ID here. Now followed by places, so that we can reach this route if we enter our domain slash some user ID slash places. If that's the path we have, I want to reach user places here, this component. Now let's also add exact here as we did it on the other routes to make sure that only exactly this path loads this route. And now we should be able to reach user places. 
if we save that and we go back to our application and I click on the user, we are going to a page which has exactly this path. So if I click here, that looks good. Here are our user places. Now the buttons don't look awesome yet. We can definitely work on those and we will. But other than that, this looks really, really neat. Now you see my places is highlighted here. This makes sense because at the moment in nav links, I set the link my places leads to to slash u1 places, which is exactly where on the link we're on right now because we clicked on this user who has an ID of u1 and therefore, well, this is the URL we have. Now what we're not doing is we're not making sure that we only show the places that belong to that user. This is something we're not doing. And that will be the next step. In user places, we want to make sure that we filter out the places that don't have the ID of the user we have encoded in the URL. Because we only want to see the places of the user with the ID U1, not all places. So this place with the ID of U2 for the creator, we don't want to show that. Let's fix that.